There are only two types of people in this world, those who liked Fast and Furious before Fast Five, and those who liked Fast and Furious after Fast Five. And I personally like my Fast and Furious after Fast Five. I just don't like the feel of the older movies. They are cheesy and dated and take themselves way too seriously. Now, Fast and Furious is still pretty cheesy, but it embraces all of the campy elements in order to tell a fun and over the top story. I was never engaged with any of the street racing sequences in the older films, but now so much action shit is going on, I can't help but enjoy myself. Dom Toretto turned his whole family from being grease monkey DVD stealing thieves into super spy agent action heroes. I don't know how he did it, but I don't care. Fast and Furious is the definition for what suspension of disbelief should be. If you're taking the new Fast and Furious movies seriously, you're watching them wrong. Turn off your brain and have some fun. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. Fast and Furious is the perfect kind of guilty pleasure. Hobbs and Shaw has a scene where Hobbs runs straight down off the side of a building, lands comfortably on his shoulder, and takes no damage. Mindless action, great spectacle, and a surface level message about family. That's what the Fast and Furious is all about. Director Justin Lin has a great grasp of what this franchise is. Fast and Furious is like an anime come to life. Wild, over-the-top action, with characters spouting ridiculous exposition every now and again, just to get back to the wild and over-the-top action. But instead of having mechs or something, our characters here are all about cars. Fast cars. The fastest cars in the universe. Cars that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with battle tanks and keep up with an Antonov AN-124. Damn, I really do respect the absurdity in these films. See, The Fast and the Furious used to be about street racing and petty thieving, but eventually it became about heisting and spies. The first few films may have had its niche audience, but the franchise needed to reinvent itself if it wanted to reach a more mainstream audience, and that evolution came about flawlessly. Now, Furious 6 is in a peculiar spot, being placed in between Fast 5 and Furious 7. Fast Five started the adrenaline rush that this franchise needed, introducing The Rock into the series and focusing on high-octane action. And Furious 7 is the highest grossing film in the franchise, featuring a surprising amount of heart in its story, mainly because of the tragic and sudden passing of Paul Walker. So I believe that Furious 6 doesn't get the love that it deserves because of its placement in the saga but I contend that Furious 6 actually made the franchise what it is today, building on top of the foundation that Fast Five had laid. See, Fast Five was a heist film. It had a real Ocean's Eleven vibe to it. And by the end of the film, Dom and his friends successfully stole millions of dollars, meaning they no longer had to be petty thieves, but they had to scatter across the globe as fugitives, unable to return home. So Furious 6 didn't need to be another heist film, our heroes had finally gotten to a point where they were comfortable with, financially speaking. No, Fast 6 needed a way to find a more emotionally resonating story that could reasonably bring these characters back together while also exploiting their newfound wealth. And so, Furious 6 is a superhero movie. I mean, think about it. This movie came out in the same year as Iron Man 3, Man of Steel, and The Wolverine. And Furious 6 is just as good, if not better, than some of those flicks. In Furious 6, Agent Luke Hobbs is tracking down a gang of lethally skilled mercenary drivers, led by Owen Shaw. But Shaw's second in command is someone that Dom knows. Letty, it's Letty. Knowing that Dom would do anything for his family, Hobbs asks the crew for help, in exchange for full pardons. Now, for those of you who don't know, Letty died in an explosion in the fourth movie. Only six reveals that Letty didn't truly die, she merely suffered from a few minor injuries and caught amnesia. And yes, is it silly and soap opera-ish for a main character to catch amnesia? Of course it is. But again, the soap opera nature of the narrative allows for our characters to come together in a way that they never could have before. 
They have all the money, cars, gadgets, and gizmos in the world now. They're basically all James Bond. And their mission is to bring back a member of their family. Plus, the third act in this film is incredibly exciting. After all the soap opera shit is put to the side, we are treated to glorious non-stop action. The last half an hour or so of this movie is a pure adrenaline rush, and I was very surprised to learn that most of the stunts we see in this film are done practically. That's impressive, especially considering, like I said earlier, we see a battle tank. Later installments in the franchise would rely on heavy CG work, as evident in Furious 7 when Dom jumps a car from one building to another. So for Fast 6 to lean on practical work is pretty cool. Everyone loves practical effects these days, so I gotta respect it here. And I love Luke Evans as the villain in this film. I honestly think I like his performance more than Jason Statham's. In Furious 7, Statham kind of just grunts his way through the movie, and though his character has become more fleshed out as the series progresses, I can't even call him a villain anymore. He's a good guy now, and he was the dual protagonist in Hobbs and Shaw. But in Furious 7, he's a cartoon character. In Fast 6, however, Luke Evans is one cool motherfucker. He plays such an active role in the narrative. He's bad, he isn't afraid of getting his hands dirty, and he gets up close and personal with Dom and his crew. Compare this to the villain of Fast 5. Can you even tell me who the villain of Fast 5 is off the top of your head? Go ahead, take a second, I'll give you some time. It's Hernan Reyes, as portrayed by Joaquim de Almeida. Who the fuck is that? Now, I admit Shaw's plan in Furious 6 is a little convoluted. He's out to get a computer chip that can make a deadly device or whatever. It's not important, it's actually a bad MacGuffin. But compare that to Furious 7 where Jaiman Hansu is after the God's Eye, a program that can track any living person from anywhere in the world. Now that's the silliest MacGuffin I've probably ever seen before. It's the ultimate MacGuffin to end all MacGuffins. But yeah, I like Luke Evans, and I wish we got to see his character return more often. But I understand that he's not as big of a recognizable name as Jason Statham, but he is still quite charming. He's probably the best actor in the entire cast here as well. The Rock is charismatic as always, but he can charm anybody just by smiling at them. Vin Diesel is fine, Paul Walker is fine, everyone is fine. Tyrese Gibson isn't even annoying as Roman. He does far less yelling here than he does in later installments in the series. The acting here is more than serviceable. The only person in the cast that is rather stiff is Gina Carano, and maybe Gal Gadot. Remember, this was before Gadot became Wonder Woman. Now isn't it weird seeing Gadot merely play a tertiary character? What a throwback. But Furious 6 is not a perfect movie. There are a lot of moments of levity that are meant to be funny, but fall pretty flat. However, when the jokes do land, I laughed out loud. There's even a moment when Ludacris actually spits out his beer because he was genuinely laughing at a line that The Rock delivered. And, of course, the story itself plays out like a soap opera, including a character resurrection and amnesia and everything. Six also has a few deep cut references to the movies that have come before. And honestly, a lot of these references just flew right over my head. I appreciate that they exist, especially for longtime fans of the franchise, but some of these tie-ins do feel unnecessary and bog down the story but I do think it was a smart idea to use Letty as the film's MacGuffin. Look, this is a movie about fast cars, cool looking chases, hot chicks, battle tanks, and some espionage. It's rare to see a franchise get better with each and every new installment, but along with Mission Impossible, Fast and Furious did just that, and Furious 6 played an integral part of making that possible. So sit back, turn off your brain, and have a Corona. Fast and Furious is all about family. So I would likely give Fast and Furious 6 three and a half out of five stars. Thanks for watching.